Are you an investor that is having a hard time earning serious money on the stock market? Are you stuck, overwhelmed by the never-ending waterfall of financial news and get-rich-quick schemes? Not sure what works and what doesn't? Well, fear not. You're in the right place. Because this is the official Value Investing Boot Camp Podcast. And now, to help you skyrocket your returns, here is your host, value investing expert, Nick Prockman. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the Value Investing Bootcamp podcast. I'm your host, Nick Kraakman. Uh, this limited edition podcast series for the people who are just uh, tuning in for the first time uh, is uh, to accompany a, a value investing video course I'm developing at the moment. It will be released uh, somewhere uh, during the end of June and it will contain all the things I know about value investing. It will literally be jam packed with information and knowledge and spreadsheets, ebooks, checklists, the whole lot. So you'll get everything you need to know about value investing in one package. In this podcast series, I uh, want to uh, introduce m many of these uh, topics already, although they will be covered in more detail in the course. Uh, in this episode, uh, we will be talking about uh, free cash flow, which is a very, very important but often overlooked metric. So uh, we will go into detail uh, in this um, in this episode. So first of all, what is free cash flow? Well, a company generates cash by uh, just running its business. It's it is called uh, cash from operations. Uh, you can find it on the cash flow statement. On uh, yeah, one of the that's one of the financial statements we discussed in an earlier uh, episode. So on the cash flow statements, you see a um, yeah w one figure which is the cash from operating activities of or cash from operations, and that is the amount of cash the company actually generated from just running its business. However, that is not the cash that actually can be uh, given to shareholders because uh, the company will also have to pay for some of its. Um, yeah, it, it, it has some cost to, to keep in business, you know. It, uh, this is called capital expenditures. Uh, this means uh, property, that is often uh, also called property, plant and equipment. So it has to pay for uh, its machines, for its, uh, well, it has to pay its rent, its electricity bill, you know, just to stay in business. So if you, uh, th this is the easiest way to um, calculate free cash flow. It is by... Uh, taking the cash from operations and then subtracting the capital expenditures. What you are left with is the f so called free cash flow or the cash that is, that can be actually, uh, taken out of the business and, uh, potentially given to shareholders, um, while the business will still be able to keep on running. You know, so that's the free cash flow. And this is a very important, um, yeah, metric to value investors because uh, the discounted cash flow model, which is uh, a mu an often used model to actually calculate the value of a company, uh, requires this free cash flow number as an input. Uh, so it is important to be able to calculate it. Uh, th there is a, a more complicated way. We just said cash from operations minus capital expenditures. There is a more complicated way which uh, gives you a more accurate um, estimate uh, of the free cash flow. Uh, it has to do with um, amortization, uh, depreciation and changes in working capital. But uh, for now, let's just stick to the simple version. Um, it is important to... Remember though that um, if free cash flow of a company is negative, this does not necessarily mean uh, the company is 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 uh, not doing well. Because it could also mean that a company is simply investing a lot of money, uh, yeah, in, back into the business. Which uh, if if these investments pay off, uh, it, which it could lead to much more cash being generated. So it's not necessarily bad. However, if a company consistently uh, yeah, reports negative cash flow while still reporting increased earnings, uh, you, can, you have to be very careful because then so this could indicate that something is wrong because this is unsustainable. I mean, you can't... Um, I mean, th there is a big difference between earnings, reported earnings, and free cash flow. 
reported earnings are an accounting uh, measure, an accounting metric, and they can be tinkered with fairly easily. So it can be manipulated up or down. Uh, so net earnings do not always really represent the profitability of a company correctly. Uh, cash uh, cannot be as easily manipulated. So free cash flow often gives a more accurate uh, measure of the actual money a company is making. Um, so if, if a company a company can report, uh, for example, if we take Enron, which is a big example of uh, a company which manipulated its earnings. If we look at the, the period before it uh, collapsed, we can see that it, it reported increased earnings every single year but it's uh it had a negative uh, free cash flow for those years it just shows that it wasn't making any money but it did report net earnings so always be very careful when you uh, when you see something like this yeah because preferably you are looking for a company that reports cons that consistently reports higher free cash flow than uh, its reported earnings. In that case, you can be fairly certain that uh, this company is actually generating a lot of cash and is doing, uh, doing a very good job and it's uh, sustainable and its earnings are probably not manipulated in that, uh, that case. Also, always check what a company is spending its cash on. It could be using it to uh, invest it back into its business, could be uh, using it to buy back shares or pay out the dividend. Uh, it's important because if it's only uh, spending this money on maintaining its business, if it, it has hardly any cash left at the end, um, it's probably not such a profitable business and you might uh, yeah, be better off looking for, uh, for a better opportunity, a, a more profitable business. On the balance sheet, you can uh, look at how much cash reserves a company has. It's also uh, interesting to look at this um, number, and uh, especially over the years, look at it uh, over the past three to five years and see if they are uh, growing their cash reserves or burning through their cash reserves. This can tell you a lot about um, yeah, what a company is doing, if it's actually uh, generating a surplus of money and therefore growing its cash uh, um, Yeah cash base or if it's burning through its money and uh, not enough cash is coming in uh, you preferably of course uh, look for companies that are generating so much cash that they uh, <laughs> that they don't know what to do with it anymore i hope uh, all of this is uh, clear to you if not if you have questions about this or if you have suggestions for the for future episodes of this podcast just shoot me an email to uh, nick at valuespreadsheet.com and I'll answer you. You can also send me a tweet at value sheet. Uh, I will also be checking that and answering all of your questions. So feel free to um, let me know what you think about the show or um, if you have questions, like I said. Uh, I would also greatly appreciate it if you guys could leave a uh, review on iTunes. Because this would um, yeah, make it uh, possible for more people to find out about the show and uh, improve their uh, investment uh, decisions. Uh, also, if you have people you know that uh, might be interested in this show, um, yeah, point them to it. Uh, feel free to share, to share it with everyone and uh, yeah, spread the love. <laughs> I'll uh, see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to valueinvestingbootcamp.com to find out more on how you can invest like the pros, manage your own portfolio with confidence, and consistently earn mind-boggling returns on the stock market.